Hi, I'm Juno, and before I tell you my story, please like and subscribe. Since I was little, mom and grandma have been in an all-out war. Grandma was filthy rich, lived in a huge mansion, and ran a successful cosmetic business. But mom didn't want that life. What's the matter with you? You look like a beggar and you smell like a trash can. I raised you better than this. You're such a disappointment. I don't care what you think, mom. Money isn't everything. And that makeup you wear makes you look like a clown. And your perfume smells like feet. Don't you dare talk to me like that, you little brat. You're not the boss of me. Things got so bad, Mom moved out when she was 19 and chose to spend her life roaming the country in a camper van with less than two cents to her name. Every day, we went on mud runs and hikes through the forest. It was fun at first, but as I got older, Mom started acting weird. One time, we'd been hiking for 10 days straight. Mom, do you think we can stop and take a shower? I saw a motel a few miles back. A motel? We live on the land. Are you offended by my body odor? Is the fan not good enough for you anymore? No, I was just... Are you saying I'm not a good mom? Then she started <laughs> crying like a baby. It took me an hour to calm her down. When I was 13, we stopped at a rest stop and I met a nice girl my age. We started playing a game on her cell phone. Then mom saw us and lost her mind. She snatched the girl's cell phone, threw it on the ground, stomped it to pieces, then dragged me into the van. Mom, why would you do that? I just saved your life. Those things will fry your brain. Now go and stand on your head, count to 10 backwards, take two spoons of honey, and you'll feel much better. A couple years later, mom and I went to grandma's house for a visit. Grandma took one look at me and got really upset. Your daughter looks like a hobo. And why is she eating a bug? Bugs are a great source of protein. You can live like a wild animal, but your daughter deserves better. She needs a skincare routine, a financial portfolio, a proper education. She's going to the school of life. It's better than a stupid classroom. She needs to be free, like a bird. You're an idiot. I swear you were switched at birth. Huh? Juno, grab your things. You'll stay here with me. Grandma grabbed one of my arms. Mom grabbed the other. Let go of my daughter, you old witch. You can't have her. She's mine. Come on, Juno. Let's go. They started yanking me back and forth. Please stop. My arms aren't supposed to stretch this way. I pulled myself free, turned to run out the door, then slipped on my shoelaces and fell on my butt. As Grandma and Mom screamed and shouted at each other, I thought about the possibilities. I was tired of washing my hair in a stream and eating out-of-date food for the good of the planet. Plus, sleeping in a warm bed seemed pretty nice. I was always interested in going to a real school and mom was getting crazier by the second. I really needed a change. Sorry, mom. Traveling around is fun and all, but I want a normal life, and grandma can give me that. Mom was disappointed at first, but she respected my decision. I was sad to see her go, but totally excited to start my new fancy life. Grandma lived like the queen of a small country, with a huge staff of butlers and maids. Everything about her mansion was luxurious. Even her cat wore diamonds on her collar. My new room was amazing. It was like four no, five times bigger than mom's van. I had a huge closet full of new clothes and shoes and a bookshelf filled with books. Life was good, except for one tiny little thing. Grandma was a real stickler for rules. No running in the house. No yawning at the table. No breathing with your mouth open. My God, that's not a salad fork. That's a fish fork. She hired etiquette tutors to teach me how to be a lady, and she made me scrub the dining room floors with a toothbrush. Don't you have maids for this? How else are you going to learn the importance of hard work. I wasn't always rich. I worked my way to the top. Every time Grandma came home from work, she was in such a bad mood that she'd get mad about the tiniest things. One time, she asked me to pour her a cup of coffee. Here you go, Grandma. She took one sip, then threw it in my face. Are you trying to poison me? This coffee is cold, and it tastes like rat poo. Do you know what rat poo tastes like? She grounded me and banished me to my room for two weeks. I was so happy when school started. It was a dream come true. The fluorescent lights, classrooms, math tests, and school books were better than I imagined. I raised my hand to answer every question my teachers asked, though most of the time I gave the wrong answers. But that was okay. I was there to learn. I was super excited to make new friends, so I tried talking to everyone. Top of the morning, madam. What? Good day, sir. Leave me alone, weirdo. <laughs> the kids weren't very receptive, so I decided to step up my game. Like, when my classmate got her first period, I baked celebration cupcakes topped with tampon-shaped candies, because that's what mom had done for me. Or, when I offered to help my study group by clearing the air of bad juju by burning sage, but I accidentally set the desks on fire, people started calling me the crazy girl and 
laughed at me when I'd pass them down the hallway. Suddenly, my life didn't seem so cool anymore, and I started to regret my decision. I was walking outside, wishing that I could have a real friend, and just then, this girl fell out of the sky. She'd slipped out of the ground floor window and landed right on top of me. Her name was Nina, and she was a reporter for the school paper. Suddenly, an old janitor poked his head out of the window and started screaming like a maniac. Run! Nina and I darted across the playground, ducking behind a building and hid behind a trash can. What was that about? Sorry, I can't discuss it. It's a big story I'm working on. Then Nina got this weird look on her face. Are you okay? It looks like you're holding in a fart. You didn't hear this from me, but the janitor might be a robot or an alien. I'm not sure yet. I'll let you know when I finish my investigation. Wow, I've never met a real journalist before. Hold on a sec. I know you. You're that rich lady's granddaughter. Do you sleep on a bed made of money? Do you season your food with gold? What was it like being raised in a 54-room mansion? Actually, I was raised in a camper van. What? Nina was super interested in my life story. And when she wrote an article about my childhood, I went from crazy to exotic. And everyone in school wanted to talk to me. Nina and I started spending all our time together, investigating stories, watching MSA videos, going on spa dates and shopping sprees. Soon, we were BFFs. Life was pretty good. But then one day, Grandma told me something that turned my world upside down. It was a couple of days after Grandma's birthday when she called me into her room to discuss her will. Juno, these past couple of years, you've proven to me what an amazing girl you are. And I'm so proud of how far you've come. So, as a gift, I want to leave you this house. OMG, this house? It's worth millions. But on one condition. By your 18th birthday, you need to be engaged. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, you're so funny. Oh, honey, this is no joke. Your future husband must have these characteristics. One, he must be handsome. Two, he must be rich. And three, he must be smart or strong. Your choice there. But if he doesn't meet these requirements, then the deal is off. But this makes no sense. I've never even had a boyfriend. I only want what's best for you. You need someone by your side. I don't want you to end up alone like me. A handsome, rich husband won't take advantage of you. And if you marry him, you'll be even richer, and your future will be secure. I know you'll make the right decision, but if you don't, I'll give the house away to charity, which will honestly break my heart, but that will be that. Then Grandma's butlers escorted me out of her room and slammed the door in my face. That night, I couldn't sleep. I tossed and turned for hours, thinking about what Grandma said. The mansion was amazing, with rooftop pools and a restaurant-grade kitchen, but I didn't really care about that. This was the first place I'd felt happy in. It was like a real home. I couldn't bear to see Grandma sell it, so I had no choice but to do as Grandma wanted. But boys? Ugh. If I was gonna do this, I'd need help. The next morning, I raced to Nina's house and told her all about my mission. Luckily, Nina was obsessed with dating shows, and thanks to the newspaper, she knew everyone at school. You've come to the right place. Just let me check the heartthrob database. The what? My masterpiece. A complete list of every boy in our school. Now, I've ranked them by your Grandma's parameters, and I have three perfect candidates. Your first match is William. He's handsome, rich, and super smart. William was in my advanced math class, and we'd spoken a couple of times, so I decided to be direct and ask him out. Hi, um, William, right? I, would you like? But the moment I looked into his dreamy blue eyes, my mind went completely blank. You know, just say something, anything. Did you know that vanilla flavoring is made from a beaver's butt glands? Gross. No, butts are pretty cool. Bees waggle their butts to communicate, like this. William <laughs> laughed at me, then walked away. After that disaster, Nina set me up on a date with a guy named Lance, the captain of the football team. He's handsome, rich, and really strong. My sources tell me he can bench press a thousand pounds, leap over a tall building, and he's faster than a speeding bullet. That doesn't sound right. On my date with Lance, we went to a fancy restaurant. Lance was cute, but he was dumb as a doornail. And all he talked about was his muscles and his workout routine. I was so bored, I fell asleep at the table. Okay, the third time's a charm. His name's Malik, and he's perfect. He's handsome, rich, and he loves nature, like you. Malik was just as Nina promised. He was super cute, funny, and sweet. We met at the park for a picnic and talked for hours. You're amazing, Juno. I've never met a girl like you before. I think you might be my soulmate. Really? Malik told me that He'd been single for a long time, and he'd been searching for years for a girl like me. He kissed me, and my heart melted. I was so happy. I'd finally found the one. That was until Malik's girlfriend marched up to us, called him a cheater, and threw a frappuccino at his head. He ducked, and it hit me instead. 
I shoved him aside and stormed off. Stupid boys. But the next day, things got totally out of control. My driver dropped me off at school, then a swarm of boys surrounded me. Juno, I'm the guy for you. I swear, I'll love you forever. Pick me. You're the girl of my dreams. They started closing in like a horde of lovesick zombies. Marry me, Juno. We're meant to be. I promise I'll never lie to you again. I shoved my way past them and raced into the building. They chased me down the hall. I rushed into the newsroom and slammed the door behind me. But when I turned around, I saw something that made me as mad as a hornet. Nina was doing a happy dance in front of a computer. An article with my face on it was on the screen. Get the girl and get super rich? Isn't it cool? My article just went viral. It's got a million hits, and it's only been up a couple of hours. Suddenly, my phone started blowing up with texts and DMs from a dozen random boys asking me to marry them. Why would you write something like this? Oh, come on, Juno. It's just a story. All your dates were a disaster. I thought it could help. Plus, this story put me on the map. I've gotten like a dozen job offers. I felt totally betrayed. Nina wasn't trying to help me find a husband. She was using me to help her career. You backstabbing jerk. I should have never trusted you. Don't call me a jerk, you brat. I stormed out of there and hid in the janitor's closet until my bodyguards picked me up. And just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. i just gotten home when I heard shouting and screaming. I raced up the stairs and found mom and grandma having the biggest fight ever. I read the article. Thanks to you, my daughter will have gold diggers chasing her now. And what is this talk about marriage? She's not even 18. You're ruining her life. Don't be so dramatic. I marched off to my room to get some peace and quiet, but halfway up the stairs, I heard a loud crash. I raced back and saw grandma on the floor, unconscious. Your grandma fainted. Call 911. The ambulance came and took grandma to the hospital, and she was rushed into surgery. I was so worried about her, I couldn't help but cry. I'd never seen her look so frail. A couple of hours later, the doctor told us she was out of immediate danger, but he had no idea when she'd wake up. The guilt I felt made me sick to my stomach. Grandma collapsed because she was arguing with mom about me. I ran out of the hospital to get some air and bumped into Nina. As soon as I saw her, I burst into tears. I told her all about my grandma and how it was my fault she was in a coma. You can't blame yourself. Your grandma and your mom have been having epic fights since before you were born. My mom used to write about them when she was in school. I don't know what to do. I'm tired of coming between them. Mom wants me to be a wild woman like her, and Grandma wants me to be rich and married. Maybe instead of trying to live their lives, you should live the life you want. And by the way, I'm sorry for being a jerk. I shouldn't have written that article. I hope you can forgive me. I forgave Nina and decided to take her advice. I fired my etiquette tutors, stopped looking for a husband, and told Mom that living on the road wasn't for me and that I wanted to find my own path. She was surprisingly supportive. Deep down, all your grandmother and I want is for you to be happy. We just got caught up in our own drama and unresolved issues. I spent the rest of the year joining all kinds of school clubs like the debate team, the drama club, and even cheerleading. After we graduated, Nina and I went on a trip around the world, and we stopped in Egypt. We went on a tour in the desert, and I fell into an abandoned pyramid full of mummies. Thanks to that accident, I found my real passion, archaeology. A couple of years later, I was on a dig in Morocco when my phone rang. Grandma was finally awake. By the time I walked into her room, she was back to her usual self with perfect hair and makeup and, to my surprise, she was laughing and smiling with mom. I ran up to them and gave them both a huge hug. Calm down, child. Let's not overreact. I just needed my beauty sleep. Don't ever scare us like that again. Are you saying that you missed me? Of course we did. Who else is gonna nag me about the mud on my clothes? Or how do you use a salad fork. I'm so sorry, ladies, for any hurt that I caused you. I felt so lucky. Some people didn't even have one mom, and I had two. Both amazing in their own special way.